I didn't decide not to go to the White House after the Super Bowl. I said it before the game. Everybody else jumped on the bandwagon after the game. I just don't fuck with the president. If anybody invite me to their house that I don't want to eat their food, I ain't going. And he looks like somebody who I don't want to eat their food. <laughs> looks like going to, going to have lunch with Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs>So who we got in the pool hall today? Hey, oh, we got a good friend, Marty B. What's good with you, baby? No much. I'm just stay on this side with things that you know are going on in the world. <laughs> we got enough space between us over here, man. Go ahead. Let me see how nice you are, though. I really am more into pool tricks. Okay. I like to watch people do that stuff. Like the Black Widow, she was mm -hmm. cold. But I just feel like this is a weird game for you to pick anyway. Who the fuck picks pool as an activity between two men to have a conversation? Hey, it's just weird what? to me. Hey, like you, For some reason, 2.5 million people want to watch this shit. So, look, what the hell is that? Like, Did you make up. anything? I didn't make it. This is my first shot. When you look back at that Super Bowl season, take me through that year. What do you remember from that year? That started with getting traded. I was at Disney World when I got the call to say I was going to be traded. So then my daughter's birthday was around and we were going to Disney World. Bill Belichick called me and he was like, hey, we need to get you out here for your physical or whatever. I'm like, well, coach, I'm at Disney World right now. I literally cannot come. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just trying to enjoy Disney World with my family. You know, Mickey's there, Goofy's there, everyone's there. You know, it's just like, these guys are great. And at the same time, I've been traded. Bill called me back. It's like, well, we got to get you out here. Otherwise, the trade won't go through if we don't get the physical. And I was just kind of like, well, that sounds like a you thing. <laughs> but then my agent called me. He's like, hey, no, you got to go. You got to go. And I was like, I can't go tomorrow, like two days from now. Like, why I got to stop my life right now to fly to fucking Boston to go see this motherfucker and go do an MRI for them? Like, I'm here right now trying to, I'm at Disney World for crying out loud. Not like I'm in the daughter's birthday. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. But then Tom calls me. Tom and Brady? Tom Brady, yeah, Tom. Brady. We all don't have a personal one-on-one -on -one connection with Tom Brady, just call him Tom. Well, me and Tom became cool because of our love for interior design. What? We bonded over Pinterest. Um, <laughs> Wait, you we, was, with Tom Brady would just surf at Pinterest? Yeah, so Tom calls me and he was like, man, I'm so excited about getting you out here. And I was just kind of like, yeah, but Tom, do I have to go out there right now? Because I feel like they're kind of making this shit up right now. I don't know how this goes. Like, do I have to come? He's like, yeah, but you kind of have to go do that right now. I was like, <laughs> all right. How'd that season go? For someone like you, as you're talking about your career, I mean, that season for a lot of people was a season many people won't forget. Even the casual fan remembers that Patriots season. For me, I think that was the most fun I ever had playing football. From Pee Wee to just any time on any team, it was just fun. Like all the guys were cool. No one bothered me about like what I was doing or if I was at art museums or whatever. And I respected the way that they treated people like men. Mm, what they right? Mean? A lot of these coaches talk to players as if they're boys, right? Like I'm a, I got a wife and kid, coach. What the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> man? I ain't shit. Did you ever grow up wanting to be a Super Bowl champion? That's a tough question because I don't think it was my idea of it. First person that I experienced it was when my brother won a Super Bowl. Mm. And he told me, he's like, it was like having another child. So when my brother won, we were talking about it. And first of all, he's an asshole. And I was in Seattle and like, I was standing at his house. I was like, hey man, you got some of that orange juice? He's like, yeah, go get some out the refrigerator. I opened it, there's the Super Bowl trophy. You know what I'm saying? He just had this thing, like you get in the car, he's in the car with him, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's like, yo, this is the greatest feeling ever, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so for me, I'm like, damn, that sounds good. Like, I want to feel that. But it was different in New England. Going into the Super Bowl, what was that experience like? Yeah, we're getting our ass kicked. I mean, what the fuck were the Falcons doing? They were celebrating <laughs> at the halftime. <laughs> One thing I remember is, I think it was two chains that came down, like at the halftime, like, that I remember their sideline more so than like our sideline. <laughs> two chains, T.I. It was like, everybody you would imagine being at the strip club without the strippers. Man, Tupac was probably on that sideline. <laughs> <laughs> Cause looking at their sideline, you like, these motherfuckers really think they won already. <laughs> Take me through the second half. Like, during that comeback, as it happens, what's going on in your mind as you see the Falcons slipping this thing That's away? the whole thing. Nothing. I was like water. And all my teammates were like water. Basically, it was just like so focused and into a space of flow that I'd never experienced in sports before. In fact, when we won, I had to ask Tom Brady. I said, yo, Tom, did we win? He's like, yeah, we, we're champions. I said, oh shit! You didn't know you won? We champions! I don't know the fucking overtime rules and Super Bowl shit, be changing this shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I was in flow. Like, I don't know what the score is, right? I had no idea. Like, I just, that was my only time of like, really like snapping out of flow. Cause I'm looking around and guys are running around. I mean, we all crying and I don't know why I'm crying. My brother comes down and I think I was extra emotional. 
We're Super Bowl champions, the Bennett brothers. Like, who the fuck can say that shit? I thought you were gonna be really damn good at this game. How many, how many episodes yeah, of this have you done? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in your mind in Chicago as now you finally left Boston, you've done everything that you had to do that a Super Bowl champion does? It may be the pinnacle for somebody, but like, it was never like that pinnacle moment for my life. But I actually felt like, damn, I've dedicated 20 years of my life for this shit. Like, I didn't make the world a better place. Right, I didn't make any contributions to changing the world and the idea of what I feel like should change the world. So in that off season, you're sitting in a space where you're like, I spent 20 years doing this, it wasn't worth it. What are you doing that off season then? I had to get another job because I was just in between jobs and I ended up going to the Packers, which was fucking disastrous from day one. After that, I ended up back with the Patriots. I went on IR, but when I went on IR, I had an injury that I couldn't really fix, which was a broken spirit. And there's no type of treatment that the NFL could provide for a broken spirit. Like there's nothing they could do for me at this point. There's nothing Bill Belichick could say, Tom, or the trainer. My spirit was broken in a way that it was something else I was looking for that no one in the sporting world could give me. The only thing that could really truly heal was art and just making things. When I make things is when I feel most like myself. So after that, you know, I kind of rekindled this love I had with Japanese culture. You know, I had been studying, you know, wabi-sabi and yokai and Shintoism and all these things. So I told my wife, I was like, man, I really feel like I should go to Japan. How long were you there for? I was there for 10 days. Tom Brady had a guy over there named Leonard they put me in connection with. Basically, all I did was I studied the Japanese culture. I prayed to the Japanese gods, learned language, learned the art. I had my notebook, taking notes out and drawing things and like just taking it all in. Like I was very present. And it made me reflect like, damn, why the fuck do I do something that I don't love every single part of? After that, I came back. I retired like a week after coming back from Japan. I told my wife, I was like, I'm retiring. So I did a little art piece and I did that and then I retired. But it was really because of the connection in Japan with the people. You still feel like you have a broken spirit? Do I have a broken spirit? Hell no, nah, I'm fucking rich as fuck. <laughs> Meaning rich as of mind and spirit. I'm the healthiest, I'm a better husband. I didn't want my daughter to grow up with a football dad because that enigma could take over what your dad is. If my daughter be like, my dad traveled the world, he spent summers in Japan, you know, he built video games, he changed the world, he brought internet infrastructure to underserved communities. That's my legacy, right? Football is not my legacy and it never was. I feel like I'm a better me without the game of football.